It's been over 20 years now since I first met Frank in the bakehouse at the sanitarium factory in Kurumbong. I was just starting at Avondale College and uh, we became great friends with Frank and Lynn. And then from Avondale College we went directly to Whanganui, Frank and Lynn's hometown. And the church down there remembered Frank very well, Frank and Lynn, as committed to the church, very involved, very enthusiastic. And I'm glad this afternoon as I look out, I can see that um, Roger Marshall is here. And Roger, this is on the program, but I just wonder whether you want to take a, just a couple of moments to come and just share a little bit about that early experience uh, with uh, the Tor family down there, because I understand you were very much involved with them. I'm not very good at speaking, especially impromptuly. It's certainly a privilege to be here this afternoon, and uh, I guess if I wanted to give you a message this afternoon, is that if you are studying with people in their homes, and they try and put you off. Just remember the word persistence. Because who knows what a Duquesne projector is? Okay. Well, this was uh, my instrument. And we went through the studies. I don't know, was it 24 or lessons? And uh, nothing seemed to be happening. So we started the series a second time. And of course, was it a Monday night or a Tuesday night that I would go? And every now and again I'd get this phone call which would say, oh, you can't come tonight. And uh, so anyway, uh, I'd say, well, that's okay. I'll come next week. So, of course, I would uh, ring up and say, well, I'm, I'm coming. And they'd say, oh, okay, you better come. So I'd come again. And uh, this happened a number of times, but uh, I, I kept up... Uh, ringing them and, and coming along. And then, of course, I got to the end uh, of two lots of Duquesne series and being a, an experienced uh, person at this, I uh, called on the local pastor, Pastor Gilbert Diaz, and I said, you better go along and see Frank and Lynn and see if you can't pull them over the line because I'm not really having too much success. And so he went around and with his skills, he, uh, he managed to do just that, and that was great. But there's... There's an interesting story I'd like to tell you, and I hope they don't mind, is that Pastor Dia said, well, we'd like you to start attending church. And it just shows you the type of people they are. They said, well, we can't come straight away. And, of course, when you hear those sort of things, you get a bit concerned. And uh, I think it was Lynn. She was coaching a netball team, and she'd made a commitment to this team for the season. But they said... Once netball's over, we'll come. So we waited, and we waited, and netball finished, and the towers came. And the towers kept coming every week, and they got fully involved in church. And then about 12 months later, I heard that Frank and Lynn were going to Avondale, and Frank was going to study for the ministry. And I honestly could not believe it. I was blown away. But anyway, here we are today. He's been a successful minister and now he's being ordained. And it's my prayer that God will continue to bless uh, Frank and Lynn and their family as they serve in this area. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Roger. In the life and experience of every person who is truly called by God to be a pastor, a leader of his church, there comes a, a very specific impression by the Holy Spirit to devote one's life, one's very best energies to the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Frank, you did not take too long to, uh, to devote yourself to this task early in your Christian journey, making the decision to transfer to Avondale a, f a few short years after baptism. 
And when you got there, Frank and Lynn, you didn't rush through it like so many of the rest of us did. <laughs> you took every opportunity to make the most of what you could learn and experience while you were there. And this is one of the things about Frank that I think many of us will appreciate and, and recognize. He's one of those steady-as-you-go type of people. Steady-as-you-go. And that's what it was like as you took a very active role of support and of ministry up there mainly, well, in a lot of the churches in that uh, area, but I guess mainly Cessnock Church. And, you know, for a number of years, I thought perhaps, and I guess there were many of us who thought perhaps that you're not coming back to New Zealand, that uh, you're going to end up being one of those good old Aussie blokes. <laughs> you know, we were so glad to hear the news that you had accepted the call that uh, Pastor Jerry gave to come back and minister in New Zealand. It's been great. We believe, and our impression is that you've been fulfilling a sound and God-anointed ministry in the north, up in Te Kao, Kaio, Kaitaia, and Kaikohe. And it's so good to see you here today, Frank and Lynn, with your son, Raniera, with your church community, and many others who have come to support you and to be present for this very unique event. And Frank, today, by your, your church community, including us at the conference and union level, are here by the sanction of God to acknowledge and affirm through ordination your call to the gospel ministry. And it's a privilege for us to share this occasion with you. We praise God that we can do this, don't we? Celebrate your call to ministry. And along with that, through the laying on of hands and prayer of consecration, your own amen and acceptance of God's call. Just a quick snapshot of that uh, photo. We'll come back to it shortly. The scripture says, you who bring good tidings to Zion, go up on a high mountain. You who bring good tidings to Jerusalem, lift up your voice with a shout. Lift it up. Do not be afraid. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. See, the sovereign Lord comes with power and his arm rules for him. See, his reward is with him and his recompense accompanies him. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers the lambs in his arms and carries them close to his heart. He gently leads those that have young. This is an imperative of the gospel. Its application was in the first instant to the promised one of Israel. The Messiah of God who would come and fulfill God's promise given to Adam and Eve. The Lord Jesus Christ himself. But it's a reminder. It's an instruction to every minister, to every person called by God to carry the good news. And there's so much that comes out of the, these texts, but I just want to take a couple of moments to reflect on, a, on two or three points. Firstly, it refers to the bearer of the good news, which is what you are as a minister of the gospel. A minister of the good news of Jesus Christ. You are commissioned by God for this task. You are his messenger and as such a leader among people. As a leader and messenger of God's gospel, you do have something to say. You do have authority to point Jesus up, to point people upward, to focus them upward on Jesus. 
The world we're living in is changing day by day. Every day it's changing. Human life and its problems often are more complex, more subtle, more brazen, more stressful. But the divine solution remains the same. Here is your God. His wisdom, his power, his authority, his grace have a telling impact for every person, for every community, for every situation, and every circumstance. May you never forget this, Frank. May it feature as a centerpiece in your work and service. I think there will be times of temptation when you might be tempted not to say what needs to be said. Pressure to do something other than bringing the gospel to bear on the issues and situations. Certainly tact and discretion is needed. But never forget who gives you the authority to speak up and to speak out. It is God himself. Lift up your voice. Don't be afraid. For the message must be heard. Here is your God. Speak boldly and courageously for Jesus. Because the next point that comes out of this is that the message is all about him. It's all about Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. God revealed in person. Lord and ruler. Not only that, he is coming. He is returning in righteousness, bringing justice. But particularly, he comes bringing his rewards with him. His rewards for the faithful. And thirdly, the scripture highlights the relational aspects and points out that it is a pastoral ministry that you perform. And so equally important, Frank, is not only that you are pointing people to Jesus, but that you yourself emulate Jesus. That in your service you represent Jesus, that you are like Jesus. To put it simply, Love people. I know you do that. But keep doing it. Keep loving. Keep listening. Keep caring. Your work includes teaching, rebuking, correcting, training in righteousness from God's word. Certainly, it includes the equipping of God's people for, for the work of ministry. But what you do and what you say happens in the context of relationships of personal care, of having the utmost regard for the person, just as Jesus did for each of us. It's not always easy, is it? Because I think every now and then, perhaps, the flock might behave like they've caught rabies, and it puts the shepherd in a very difficult place. But it's important to remember the main point of God's purpose and claim on human life is built on love. Love. Just look at the verbs for a moment. The verbs in this verse. He tends his flock like a shepherd. He gathers. He carries them close to his heart. He gently leads. These verbs and contexts are an expression of care, of concern, of the real love that God has for people. It's love and action. So may your ministry be like this. When you lift up your voice and say, here is your God, you're inviting people to catch a glimpse, to experience the reality of God's character of love, to know the strength of his power, his righteousness, his judgment, is the outworking of his love for all of us and for all of them out there. My friends, Frank and Lynn, He's got your life in his hands. He has your continuing ministry in his hands. Keep trusting in God. As we heard in, the, in our study this morning, God trusts in us. And he's entrusted to you this ministry. Keep trusting in him. Keep trusting in God to sustain your life 
sustain your family, to keep you through all of the difficult times you encounter as you walk the life of ministry. Trust God and love people. Tell them, here is your God through your example. Show them what God is like, how God acts, how God cares for the people that he loves and sacrificed himself for. We love you, Frank. You're a great guy. Your people love you. And we certainly affirm you today. We thank God for you. And we pray God's blessing upon you and Lynn, your family and your ministry. Amen.